Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you a lot about a water to air cooler setup and how you can apply it to your own turbo setup. So assuming you already have a turbo, let's say you're with an air to air setup and you wanna to go to water to air systems. This is the video for you. This is the video for you. It's definitely a better system to cool your hot turbo air than uh, air to air. So I have a video explaining that. It's my previous episode. I'll put the link up here. You can watch that one first. All right, so I'm gonna start off with where to mount this stuff. I've got a intercooler, I've got a rack, and I've got a water box. I'm gonna start with the water to air intercooler. So as you now know, the blue caps are where the air goes in and out. It doesn't matter if it's in here, in here, or out here, out here. It, it's versatile, you can have it each way you want. And I chose to put my cooler right here. So that's the spot I chose to put mine. And the reason being is because my turbo's right here, chilling there, getting cold air, shooting it towards the intake. So it has to be on the side where the intake is in a convenient spot for that. So I'm going to run pipes from here, which is the inlet of my turbo, the cold side of the turbo, right into this pipe here. And it will push the air through the water air intercooler and then come out this side. And then I'm going to put it to the throttle body. When you're choosing a spot to mount it, you want it to be easy to remove. Like if you're gonna be pulling your engine out, all I'm gonna have to do is undo two bolts, put it out, and then I can get all my engine out, training out, whatever I gotta do. I always make sure that things are easy to remove when I'm adding things because later on it can really suck when you're wanting to change things or replace engines or whatever. And now I'm going to, so since we decided where this is going, we gotta decide where my rad is going. So this is my rad for my engine. I am adding a rad for my water to air intercooler. So what I was thinking, I was thinking putting it right here so it will get its own air. It won't get heat from the rad when I'm sitting because the, the rads are, are for engines are always very warm. Yeah, I can put it in front and everything, but I personally think I'm gonna put it right here. So here is the rad I'm going to use. It's a dual core ATV rad. I explained all this stuff in the last episode. It's what I like and I think looks good. And also it is going to get a ton of air because it's by itself. I can also put fans behind it. There's lots of room for fans. So there's lots of room for air to go in, lots of air to, room for air to come out. So we're good. That is the spot I'm going to pick. I did have to do quite a bit of trimming, but you can pick the spot for your car. It doesn't matter. As long as it's getting air in and air out of the rad, it will cool. And another thing to really consider is where your inlets are for the rad. So since I'm gonna be having mine right here, I'm going to have the in for the water on this side. And as you can see, the actual spout is fairly low. So what rads tend to like is that they like the fill to be on the top. This rad was designed to be ran like this, but there's nowhere in my car where this will work. But you can flip rads, you can flip them any way you want, but you need to really figure out how you can get the air out of the system. And water is heavier than air, so you want the water inlet to be as high as possible so you don't get air in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this off, cap the hole that I cut, and then raise it to the very, very highest point. And I made sure already that I've got room for that inlet to come out on the inside over here, way down in here. So that is good. And then the out doesn't matter too, too much, but you want the in to be positive high. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is mark that, cut it, take weld it, whatever. But you don't have to do that. You can honestly not do that. A way you could get the air out is you could get the pump going on your um, car for the, the water pump for your air inter inner intercooler and then tip it up or this way. So upside down, so then it pushes the air up. That's one way you can bleed it. But I want to do it so it, it's very easy to bleed the system because that's not fun when you have to have all these problems and time to get all the air out. But this is what I suggest, get the inlet at the top if you're using a weird setup for a rad like I am. But honestly though, that's gonna look sick. 
So the next thing would be for me to figure out where I'm going to put my water box. And another thing with the water box is you want it to be the highest point because you're going to be putting water or ice and water in there. And if you open it and this is lower than the water to air intercooler, say it's down here and you open it and there's water in the system, the water's going to overflow. And then you're gonna have water everywhere depending on where you have located. But as you can see in my engine bay, I don't have room anywhere for getting this water box higher than here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this into my trunk and I am going to mount it as high as I possibly can. And also I'm gonna try and hide this just because, because I think that would be really cool. So when you're doing stuff like this, you can take some extra time and really make a cool setup. Like I'm going to hide that completely underneath a piece of plastic. So when I flip it up, it kind of surprises people, number one, and it, and it shows that you really take pride in your work. Take pride in your work and you will get every little bit that you put into it back in happiness. Honestly, it really works out. Like look at all this stuff. I'm just so proud of this car, that's for sure. This is, this is my test dummy car. I just practice welding, making headers, making different systems. It's a lot of fun. But anyways, I'm gonna mount this into the trunk back here. And I am going to mount it underneath this piece of plastic. So I'm gonna to have to do a lot of cutting of the factory stuff, but I will get it fitting in there. So you just open this and all of a sudden you see it. So that will be really awesome. So like I said, first off, I'm going to mount everything permanently with mounts, custom made. To, uh, I'm gonna take weld it all and uh, definitely gonna to have to alter the in and out for this. So I'm going to do that in this episode is just mount this stuff up and then move the in and out for the actual rad. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's get to it. Since I found all the locations for my watered air intercooler setup, I'm going to get right to it. Smart, start making custom brackets for the intercooler. All right, so I'm gonna make a cut here, cut here, and where I have it all dashed, that's where I'm gonna bend it. And then these are gonna be my two mounts. Got a couple brackets done for my water to air intercooler. Welds turned out really good. I, I'm TIG welding them. And I'm gonna try and see how they're gonna bolt up. All right, first steps done. The intercooler, water to air is all bolted in and it's sturdy. It's very, very sturdy. I built it so I can change the positioning like this by just loosening the top ones and then I can go like that. But that is the position I wanted. I wanted it parallel with the engine and it's perfectly parallel. I thought it would be an easier route to just go in there and then up there and having it angled up. So as you notice, one of the brackets I made was higher. So then that gets me closer to here rather than having this flat and the, the inlet would be way down here. But now it's just a, a little, um, 15 degree in there. So I'm pretty stoked about that. That's mounted, I'm just gonna leave him. I'll paint those later and I'm gonna move on. All right, so now it's time for me to mount my rad for my water to air intercooler. So like I told you, she's going in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my inlet right up there. So I'm gonna cap this, move it up. And then I'm going to cut off my fill cap. I don't need it because it's being mounted sideways. And I'm also gonna cover that. And uh, it'll be fun doing that because I love welding aluminum. I've only done it a couple times. All right, here's my rad. I changed the positioning of this and I removed the cap. So I'm good to go. I can install this bad boy onto the car permanently because then later on, I'll just have to run hoses to it.
Bam, that is looking sick. So I've got it all mounted per like permanently. It's not, it's not moving. It's screwed in four times and I straighten out all the fins. So I would like to cover it with something so it'll last because then it'll end up looking like that crappy. But yeah, I do love the way it looks. It looks like there's a lot of business going down in this MX-3. So the next thing I've got to do, um, water box all mounted up into the trunk. That's gonna be a lot of work, but for right now, I'm going to get the fittings correct. I need 5 8 fittings, like I said, for the hose, because I'm gonna be literally running outdoor hose, like if you're watering your garden, and I need those fittings onto my water box. So I have that to weld on, and then I should be good to mount it in. So what I'm going to do is weld a bung right here. I do have AN bungs on here already, but that's not gonna help me because I need a bung right here, because I'm going to fill this tank up to about here. And if I have my return on the top and it's getting pushed down, what like this is gonna be where the water's returning, it will literally make splashing noises like crazy. And this is gonna be in the car and I don't want it to be loud if I can avoid it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bung right here. So the hot water comes in to this bung and th that is a good, spot for the return like you don't want the feed up here because heat rises so the hot water is going to be at the top so the water returning has been through the rad but you might as well get the most cooling you possibly can so if you return the warm water to the top it'll sit up here and the bottom one will feed the pump and it'll pump it to the actual water to air intercooler and the liquid on the bottom is going to be the coolest because the heat rises like i said so anyways i am going to weld the bung to there and i'm going to leave these guys on there just like so i i might change my mind after but that is where i want it it'll be uh quiet and it'll also return the warm water to the top Just welded that bad boy, looking real pretty. So warm water goes in there and then the cold water comes out. So since my tank is completely done, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove all the interior on this side cause I'm gonna tuck it right in there. Three, two, one. All right, I got the interior out. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to figure out how I'm gonna mount this, where I'm gonna mount it and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna see how she fits right in there. That's not too bad. I want it to definitely fit level and everything. So. I got the water box in, finalized, all ready to go. I actually had to weld on a male fitting on the bottom because it wasn't the correct size like this one is. So I, that's all done and she's in final. Now what I've got to do is get the plastics to fit over here correctly. And here she is, all complete. Neatly tucked away back there. I really like that. When you're standing back here, you can't even see it. So that's really cool. And then the fill up's just the same. It's a little tight in there, but I'm only gonna be going into it like once a year because I'll just have coolant in here and I'll just literally check the, the, the top and see if it's full. But that's all done. That's already mounted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fully mount my intercooler. I made some sweet brackets. You saw that, they're all painted. Turned out awesome. So I'm gonna bolt that on, show you how it all looks. And there we have it. There's my mounts that I made. It's all looking really good and it's very, very solid. And then my rad. So I've got everything mounted. So I'm going to continue on this in the next episode by putting this underneath the car. This is the pump. And then I'm gonna start running my lines. And then I'm pretty much good to go other than I'm going to have to make pipes for this. And I'm gonna do all pie cuts just like this. 
but with the aluminum piping. So that'll be another episode. So there should be two more episodes. This was the basically the first one, but second one because I had one where I was just explaining the price and I'm up about four fifty dollars. So. I hope you really take pride in your work and do whatever you can to make it look as perfect and as nice as you want it to be and make your dreams come true and put in some extra effort and it'll look great. Look at look at this. This looks awesome. I am I'm honestly not boosting, but this looks awesome. It's done properly and I can't wait to see the outcome of this machine when it's done. It's going to be a reliable awesome fast car and this is a good setup and i know i'm going to be able to rely on it all right we'll see you in the next one definitely tune in it should be in about a week or so we'll see you later comment and subscribe